Thanks, Billy. It's been a long journey um, with actually no destination. When you start out in Punxsutawney High School as a high school coach, you really don't know where you're going. Um, you, I thought at one time that I was probably going to end my career there and go on and be an administrator, but uh, strange uh, turns and twists of fate uh, change that around. Uh, some people, Jimmy Gray over here says, I've never had a plan, and I guess I don't even have one now to this day. Um, however, many stops and uh, a lot of special thanks. First of all, I'd like to introduce my wife, Terry, and daughter, Sydney, over here, and thank them. Stand up, please. <laughs> thank them for all the nights that I wasn't there, and there were a lot of those uh, along the way. Uh, there's a table back here, uh, a little bit further back, quite a ways back, of uh, players from my high school team in Punxsutawney. By the way, that's where the, uh, for the some of you have heard me tell this, but that's where the, uh, the movie Groundhog Day came from. And for those of you who saw Groundhog Day, you remember that park there? Well, uh, next to that park is where Terry and I had our first apartment for $60 a month. About two years ago, I was up there in the summer and uh, walk by, and lo and behold, you'll never guess who's in the window of uh, that former apartment, the groundhog. <laughs> he now is there in a library, and uh, a friend of mine, Ted Swartz in Punxsutawney, who's about 80-some years old, said he's probably doing a better coaching job than you did when you were here, too. <clears throat> Special thanks to uh, uh, Vic Bubis, uh, of, formerly of Duke University, Bill Flynn, who's in the audience, who hired me at Boston College. Fred Schabel, who's not here but sent his regrets, hired me at the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, Billy C., of course, uh, down here. Uh, we've become great friends, and uh, we had a great marriage in, in Philadelphia and had some of the great times that I'll never forget, uh, a true friend. Uh, obviously, Jack McCluskey, who had the faith to hire me in Detroit, along with the support of Bill Davidson, Oscar Feldman, then, of course, uh, the guys you met earlier, Isaiah Joe and uh, Vinnie Johnson and Rick Mahorn, and Bill Ambeer isn't here but uh, had an emergency and, and couldn't surface. But uh, without those kind of players, you don't win championships. Uh, the New Jersey Nets organization is here where I've been two years, David Gersten, Jerry uh, Cohn, and, of course, Willis Reed, who hired me there. Uh, Dave Gavitt is here, uh, who's had a lot to do with me being involved in the Olympic team that sorry-ass group of talent they gave me, by the way. <laughs> I finally won some games with them. <laughs> All those players uh, that I've had of these, by the way, you notice there's a lot of names of teams there. Unfortunately, they find out about you, and you've got to move on after every couple of years. And I've already spent two years in Jersey, so I guess there's a big question mark. Uh, but along the way, uh, a lot of great assistant coaches, um, a lot of great players at every level, and, and that all becomes relative if you've been at all the levels that I've been at. And you know, when you, you get inducted uh, into the Hall of Fame or you're in a situation like this, you think about what you're going to say. And uh, fortunately for me, it was written by someone else. Uh, I, I suspect that all of you people got a lot of letters. I have a folder of uh, congratulations. And I received this card that I'd like to read for you because I think and it's not going to be that long, but it's kind of significant for me. It says, Chuck. It doesn't say, Dear Chuck. This is a professional acquaintance, a kind of a friend who I've never really been out to dinner with, but I used to coach against in Pennsylvania. It says, Chuck. Congratulations on your selection to the Hall of Fame. I have always wanted to tell you how much you did for me and, and the game of basketball in our area while you were here. I know there was more pride and respect for the game in our area when you left than when you started at Puxatani. I wanted to thank you for helping me realize the joy, self-satisfaction, and rewards that could come from co coaching this great game. You demonstrated that if it was worth doing, it was worth doing it right. Had you not gotten me started reading magazines, books, 
going to clinics, working in camps, and especially what I learned in those many clinics over hamburgers and coffee at Carlino's. I do not think I could have enjoyed what I have been doing for the last 36 years. He just retired last year. He also impressed upon me it was okay to love coaching. A game, coaching a game, and that I should not only respect the people in the game, but also the game itself. I hope I've done nothing to hurt it. So you see, I for one believe what this card says. If anyone deserves this honor, you do. Not for the obvious reasons of won and lost record and championships, but for everything else you did for the game. And that was kind of the, the, the best thing that could be said to me by a guy by the name of Larry McManigo, who did retire after 36 years of coaching last year. I thought the key statements were pride and respect for the game, the joy, the self-satisfaction and rewards that could come from coaching, respect the people in the game. And that's what we who do not have the talent to be a performer have to do. We have to manage and we become lifers. It's amusing to me in some ways that I watch players who become coaches from the broadcast booth in some instances and great coaches, but they become like us, the people who were in the game. They become one of us coaches. And that's what the Hall of Fame, in my opinion, has done for basketball. And I can't tell you who, how honored I am, my family, and all of the people that I'm associated with, all the friends that I have here. Sincere thanks for inviting me to your house, the Hall of Fame. I cherish it. It's truly an honor. Thank you. Thank you.